Hi, I'm Jennifer and this is Kate and today we've got a great history mystery for you. Did Jesus write this letter to King Abgar of Edessa or did he not? And after he died and ascended into heaven, Jesus sent St. Jude Thaddeus to heal King Abgar of his leprosy. Or did he? So these two questions have fascinated historians and Christians for centuries. And since today is Halloween, a great day for a mystery, we've decided to take a hard look at both the letter and the legend. Are they legitimate or just fakes? So let's start by looking at the letter first. And the story behind it goes like this. King Abgar of Edessa, which is now the modern day city of Urfa in Turkey, was dying of leprosy. And he heard that Jesus was a miracle worker, and he sent him a letter asking him to come to Edessa and heal him. And he also said in the letter that, oh, by the way, I know that your enemies are trying to kill you, so if you come to Edessa, I'll give you sanctuary here. So it was like a win-win on both sides, right? Great deal for everyone. Okay, so when Jesus read the letter, he was very touched that Abgar had such faith in him and concern for him. But he said, I'm really sorry, I have to finish my mission here in Jerusalem. However, after I'm gone, I will send one of my followers to heal you. So it's a wonderful story. And today we have both the letters, Abgar's letter to Jesus and Jesus's reply. And they turned up in the 4th century when Bishop Eusebius of Caesarea traveled to Edessa and found the letters in the archive there. And he translated them from Syriac and had them widely published. But, as we mentioned earlier, are they real or are they fakes? Well, Bishop Eusebius definitely was on board with the idea that they were real. And another historian of the time, the pilgrim Egeria, she was a nun who traveled extensively in the 300s. She was in Edessa in 384, saw the original letters, read them, and believed that they were true. So in many places, the early church adopted Jesus' reply to Abgar as literally part of their liturgy. So they definitely believed. And then down into the Middle Ages, churches in both the East and the West believed devoutly in this tradition. On the other hand, in the Bible, we see Jesus teaching orally through his sermons and parables. It was his usual method of operation to go and talk to people face to face instead of writing them notes or letters. But that doesn't mean that he never wrote anyone a letter. I mean, he could read or write. We know that from the Bible. So are the two things mutually exclusive? It's hard to know for sure. But what do scholars and historians have to say on the matter? Well, there have always been skeptics about this whole idea. For example, St. Jerome and St. Augustine, early church fathers who lived in the 400s, they never believed that these letters were legitimate. They stuck firmly to the idea that Jesus left us no written words. And many modern scholars also believe that they were fake, claiming that they were forged sometime in the 3rd century and planted in the archives in Edessa for Eusebius to find. But that does beg the question of why would someone forge them and plant them in the archives and leave them for someone to find? Yeah, I mean, did they have nothing better to do, really? So we weren't there, we don't know, but from the reading that we've done, it does seem as though the modern consensus is that the letters are fake. So think what you will. It would be really cool if Jesus really did write this letter and we still have it, but probably we'll never know 100% in this life. So we are going to move on now to the second question. Did Jesus ever send St. Jude Thaddeus to heal King Abgar as he promised to do after he died? According to tradition, he did. But depending on what sources you read, there are different versions and different details about how this actually happened. So today we're going to give you our favorite version of the story. And it goes like this. When Jesus read the letter from King Abgar, he knew that Abgar would be sad and disappointed that Jesus couldn't come in person. So what he did was he took a linen cloth and pressed it to his face. And then on that cloth, there was an image of Jesus. So that was the cloth that St. Jude took with him to Edessa. And when King Abgar saw the portrait of Jesus on the cloth, he was instantly healed. And that's why you often see pictures of St. Jude that look like this. The medallion that he's holding is actually the holy cloth called the mandolin with Jesus's picture on it. 
But again, is this true or is it just a legend? We will probably never know for sure. However, it is a very popular church tradition. And there's also this to consider. This was not the only story in which Jesus put his picture on a piece of fabric. For instance, remember Veronica's veil. Saint Veronica was the woman who stepped out of the crowd when Jesus was carrying his cross on the way to Calvary, and she wiped his face with the veil and he imprinted a picture of himself on it. And we also have the Shroud of Turin, the burial cloth of Jesus, which has an image of his whole body on it. So apparently Jesus selfies were a thing. Just saying. In any case, no matter which version of the story you read, the story always ends happily with King Abgar being fully healed of leprosy and ancient Edessa did in fact become a Christian city. So all in all, I don't think we can know 100% either way whether the letter is real or the legend is real, but we do love reading and thinking about these types of mysteries and we love sharing them with you here on our channel. So God's ways are very mysterious. <laughs> If you have a favorite Catholic history mystery, we would love to hear about it, so leave us a comment down below. We hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.